Hi everyone, I'm Infen Chen from Fuxi AR Lab in that is company. I'm pleased to be here to share you some game testing work with my partner Xiao Li, who is from the QA department. The title of our presentation is Building Intelligent Game Testing System in that is MMORPG game. Okay, now let's begin. Fuxi AR Lab is the first organization focusing on the research and application of technology in game era. The lab is founded in September 2017. Our vision is to ignite game with AR. We have five research directions, including reinforcement learning, user profiling, computer vision, virtual human, and natural language processing. Besides, we also build our data and computing platform to support all the AI research and application. Game testing is an essential part of game development. Each game team needs game test. Game testers are responsible for the game quality in the development periods. And after game published, game tester can avoid operation accident. Bugs in game will drastically spoil the game experience and cause economic loss. For example, Bioshock 2, a great game, it supports several platforms, including Windows, PlayStation, and Xbox. However, Bioshock 2 suffered from bug issues, and in the year of 2010, 2K Games announced that they will not provide patch to fix these issues and stop to offer the downloadable contents, since they even can't work around these bug issues. And another lesson from China. Dota Legend, a popular game developed by Li Li's company in Shanghai. On one holiday, the game official distributed farewell to all the players as usual. However, this time they made a big mistake. They planned to give every player 20 sovereign gold and 50 diamonds, but the amount was reversed. They gave each player 20 sovereign diamonds and 50 golds. The Diamonds were very valuable in the game. This mistake caused an economic loss of 5 million yuan. So, all the case shows that the game testing is very important. However, on the other hand, the game tests often complain with their work. The task is repeated and tedious. The workload is hard, and the salary is not satisfied, and so on. Luckily, current AI and machine learning techniques progress rapidly. All these techniques, such as evolutionary algorithm and reinforcement learning and a deep neural network, may offer new possibility to build a more intelligent game testing system. And this is also what we want to share with all of you. We explored and tested our method in one MMORPG game named Justice Online. It has become one of the most popular games in China since launched from June 2018. The main gameplays are game quests and game dungeons. Game dungeons usually include PvE and PvP. Most of them are fighting salary. The testing work of Justice Online is very hard. The building system will generate three versions in one day at each time slot. There are many zones involved, including programmers, game designers, and art designers. There are more than 400 commits during one slot. Ideally, all these three versions need to be tested in one day. And each version includes more than 100 stories and more than 100 and 1600 gameplays. The workload is so heavily in practice, it is impossible for our QA team to finish it with only 70 members. So we choose the new launch or recently modified task to test. However, this may need the game at risk with its human neighbor. Currently, we have already achieved some results and experience on the regression test of Quest and the class balancing test. So today, our presentation will focus on these two types of testing work. OK, let's begin with the regression testing of Quest. I will invite my partner, Xiaoni, to share the background of this work.
Hi, my name is Xiao Li, and I'm from QA department of NetEase Company. Yes, I'm one of the QA for Justice Online. Next, I will talk about the general testing work in our team and the difficulties encountered for regression testing of quests. Quest design is the cornerstone of MMORPG game, which help players involved in the game story and familiar with the game world. When you create a new character and enter the game, the first thing you encounter is a quest or a mission. It will teach you how to operate, how to work, and even how to kill a monster. Besides, you can learn many interesting stories by finishing them at the same time. There are mainly three types of plot-oriented quests in Justice Online. Main story, side story, and encounter story. No matter which type, their main purpose is to tell a vivid story to players. The implementation of this quest is relatively simple. And at the same time, the difficulty for players to complete is relatively low. However, to construct a colorful game world, there are a great number of these quests. So it's really a big challenge for our QAs to deal with these quests. First, the number of the quests is large. We have 290 main stories, 371 side stories, and 475 encounter stories. Each quest consists of several task steps. Step means an independent unit, such as a goal in a quest, like talk with NPC or kill some monsters. For example, a quest may require players to talk with NPC A, kill monster B, and then go to somewhere. This means that the quest contains three task steps. All steps are in a certain order. So the total number of steps in Justice Online is over 15,000. It takes 200 hours to complete all these quests just one time. Second, the task steps are modified frequently, especially for the lately designed quests. Implementations between quests are coupled. Even different quests may influence each other unexpectedly. So it's very important to do regression testing Regression testing for all quests is time-consuming and we don't have enough time and labor to do this. However, if we don't do enough regression testing, bugs may be hidden in our game. This is a contradiction. In addition to manual testing, we also have some automated methods to ensure the quality of the quest. For example, we write test scripts to run the test cases automatically to check if there are bugs. Similarly, these scripts need to be written manually. And because of the frequent iterations, these scripts also need to be maintained manually which is demanding. 
This is an example of how different quests may influence each other unexpectedly. One day, the game designer modified the boundary of the map for mission A. Unfortunately, that map was also used in another gameplay of mission B. Because of the modification, one of the guide NPC was out of boundary of the map in mission B. So, players couldn't walk to the NPC's position. Therefore, mission B was blocked. Actually, this bug is very easy to be detected if we do regression testing. We have a complete set of automated testing process. After a new build version is packed, a new task task is established. It will deploy the test environments, load the script library, and then execute the test scripts. The test re results will be collected after all cases are done. At last, it will generate a test report and be sent to everyone in the project. In the script library, there are not only scripts for quests, but also scripts for gameplays. Each script covers the process of quests or gameplay and have some checkpoints. When the script cannot proceed as expected, all the checkpoints fails, we think there may be a bug and we need to check the problem manually. Most of our scripts are running on the game client and they simulate human player's operation. Let's look at an example of how the test script works. This is a part of test script for quests. These quests require players to go to the river to fetch water and then come back and pour the water into a bucket. In our script, we use action sequence to simulate players' actions. Player need to go to the river, press F K to fetch the water, wait for fetching, and then go back to the bucket. Use atom to pour the water. At last, wait for pouring, like a flow chart. When we write the test script, each action is written as shown in the picture. However, this method also has several disadvantages. On the one hand, one quest corresponds to one test script. So totally, we need over 1000 test scripts just for quests. In our current situation, the coverage is very low as shown in the table. Only some of the quests are covered, especially for side story and encounter stories. Besides, new quests need new test script. In one of the past expansion pack updates, we updated nearly 100 new quests. So, completing all scripts is a heavy and continuous work. On the other hand, scripts are sensitive to iterations. When designers modify the quest, test script should be updated. For example, in the past, one task step required players to talk with NPC A, but now it has changed to MPCB, and the script and 
the test script may not be able to find the NPC B and it will be blocked. This means that maintaining test script is also time consuming. So we really need a new solution to deal with this simple and uh, plotted or uh, plot oriented quest. Okay, thanks for Xiao's introduction. So we need a new solution to deal with this simple and uh, plot oriented quest. We lose that the old test is insane essentially code base or rule base, we should write a script for all quests. And if we can create a virtual test, who can complete the quest by itself, that will be great. In order to implement such a virtual test, we need to remove the problems of completing quests in games. We model the problem from the view of human player, as the left board picture shows. The human player plays the game by observing the screen state and performing actions through mouse and keyboard. So, first, we define state and actions. State are abstract of current game information. They should be distinguishable between different progress of quest. Actions are what the player can do in the game. In Justice Online, a state consists of task info, landmarks, items in the bag, enemies, and so on. All this can be reflected in the screen, and they are important to decide which actions will be performed. It should be noted that the item in the state get from the internal game engines, not from screen image, which makes our measures more efficient in practice. The action defines what the player can do in games. It is not the simple operations about mouse and keyboard, but the function interface, such as run to object, which means go to the operation of, of, of an object. A candidate action including two parts, action type and the optional action parameters. All the actions can be called by our algorithms, and the implementation of these functions is provided by QA team. Okay, our solutions of regression test can be divided into three phrases. The first phrase, learn how to complete the quest through inserting and building quest graph at the same time. The second phrase, we directly use the graph to get the best path for quest and replace the action sequence in best path to perform regression test. In third phrase, we speed up the searching for new quest. Since the problem is modeled at a macro decision processes, we can build a graph of quest by Monte Carlo tree search algorithms, as shown in the left figures. The load A is the start load, and the load D is the terminal node. Once arrived at load D, it means that the quest is completed during the searching period. If the end node is arrived by the algorithm, we can calculate a best path from A to D based on the build graph. In time to version, the best path is the shortest path, which can complete the quest with minimal steps. In the, in the example as shown in the right figures, the shortest path is from A to B to C and R and D. We assume that if the game code is not changed, we can re-complete the quest following the best path again. The key of the searching algorithm is to choose the candidate action AI for load S. Here, we adopt the up confidence bound strategy in MCTS, which chooses the maximum actions values of all PI. PI is initialized with equal probabilities and updated according to the UCB equation. The CI in the equation is indicated the chosen time of action AI, so the probability of action AI will decrease if CI increase. The advantage of this strategy are twofold. First, 
it can treat of the exploration and exploitation, which is a historic problem in MCTS. Second, it can avoid infinitely loop between two loads. The number of all the candidate actions is more than 14. So, search in the whole action space is time consuming. In fact, based on the simple rulers, we can reduce the action space or not. Here is the example. In the load information, we can see that the flag of the URL open is false. So, the click mouse action is not available. And if there is a item in the bag of task, we should try use item actions. And the parameter of this action is the item ID. Another is problems. If we found two enemies around the player, we may try to attack them. All these rulers are not complicated, but they show great effect in practice. And please note that these rulers give up all the legal actions or available actions under current law. But all the legal actions has the equal initial probabilities. In the latest slide, we will use NLP technicals to assign the more potential action with high probabilities among all the legal actions. Okay, this is the workflow of our searching procedures. We receive the information from the game and extract some key information to create state load and generate action space for each load. The candidate actions including action type and its parameters. And then we choose the actions to perform in the game through functions interface. And then the procedures is repeated again. Okay. Now for the second phrase, how to use the load graph to perform regression test. That is simple. We just need to replay the best path in detail. When we enter the load A, we choose the action 1. Then we will enter the load B and C and finally arrive at D. If everything goes OK, we will arrive at the terminal node and prove that the request will not be blocked and it passed in the regression testing. However, in some cases, the situation is not always as expected. One, type, one typical case is that the game environment are non-deterministic. You may find that after you do action 1 in node A, you will not enter the node B. Even into an NC load, to solve these problems, we take two measures. One is, to, is that we will not assign action in the best path with four properties. And we also give other actions some smaller properties. On the other aspect, in an NC load, the probability of all the legal actions are average, and this makes testing work more robust. Meanwhile, we determined whether a quest passed the regression testing according to the total time. If a quest is not completed in replay models in 15 minutes, it is does not mean that there is a bug, but at least it means that there are some problems because the quest may also block human player for 15 minutes, which is not the game designers want. As the previous mentioned, we currently adopt the shortest path in the graph to perform the regression test. It is reasonable but not always valid. Here is a sketch map of one quest we encounter. To complete the quest, the players first uh, should go to NPC1 and then up down the cliff and then arrived at a position of NPC2. And this is also the shortest path to complete this quest. However, some players tend to first jump down the cliff. Unfortunately, they found that they were unable to up the cliff again. And this situation were not reproduced during the regression testing. So this case shows that the regression test of the short path only proves that there is exit a way to complete the quest, but can't guarantee the bug outside the short path. 
Now the third phrase, speeding up the searching for a new quest. Although the previous method can complete the quest, it was not smart enough because it needed to try every legal action and waste a lot of time. But human player will not. Human player will read the tip and the description of the quest first, and then they try the most potential actions. So, enlightened by these ideas, can we speed up the building of testing using tip and a description on screen? The answer is yes. NLP technicals can. Our method is illustrated in the figure. First, we can extract the text of game description. Here is an example in Justice Online. Living from Army Camp with Chi Shao Shang. The Army Camp is a place, and Chi Shao Shang is the name of an NPC in the game. When a human read this text, they may realize that they should go to the prison of Arm Cap, and before this, they may need to find the NPC Chi Shao Shang. We follow the same idea of human. First, we need to extract the entities in the taxes, like Arm Cap and Chi Shao Shang. The two entities are important, and we can retrieve more related info information, such as operations and IDs, from the game date. Then we look for the verb in the text. Liu Fo. We know that Liu Fo is means to go to somewhere. So the action run to operation and run to the object are the most potential actions. Although the common knowledge is simple, it is difficult to write rulers. Here we need to implement two models. One is to extract entities. It is not difficult. We adopt JBA, a Chinese word segmentation tool, to achieve the purpose with custom dictionaries. The other model is to map sentences or words to potential actions labels. Essentially, it is a clarification task in machine learning domain. It is not a difficult train task, however, it needs train data. So, well, we can collect labeled dataset to train a classification neural network. Fortunately, we already get the dataset when we finish the first phrase. The best path includes text and action labels pairs. After collection date and training, we can fade into text and output the prediction probabilities of all legal actions. And this NLP models is easy to integrate with the previous algorithms. The predictions probabilities is used to initiate the PI of all legal actions, and it means that the legal actions will not average the chains. And the potential actions will have the large change to be selected, so the searching speed is elicited. The result is as our expected. It works. We trained a neural network with a dataset including over 2,700 samples and tested it on a validation set with about 618 samples. The accuracy of entirety uh, extractions models is 98%, and the top 5 recall of clarifications models is nearly 88%. And in the real case, it speed up the searching of new quests for three times faster. Uh, here is a, a video demo which shows the processes of one regression test. The first player go to the award port, and then they use an item and wait to get the bar, and then they back to the NPC. And then use the water in the bucket. And the last waiting really single box. So at this time the regression task is completed. Okay. And next, so we will report some result in the real application of regression testing in that is game justice. So welcome. Next I will talk about our new automated regression testing architecture based on AI. In the past, our automated testing architecture only contained one game server and several game clients. Because 
most of our scripts are running on the clients. Now we use two major parts in our new architecture, architecture to do our daily testing work. One is testing environment and the other one is training environment. Testing environment is used to do daily regression testing. There are one game server, several game clients, and one algorithm server. Game clients, uh, game server sends the state to algorithm server as input, wait for the actions as output. Then send them to the client, and the client execute the actions. This cycle loops until all tested cases are finished. At last, it will generate a test report. In this environment, the algorithm server uh, uses the best path for the quest, which have been trained to finish the quest as stable as possible. Now, we use three computers for clients, one computer, one game client. We rarely use other resources except the basic environment for game client and game server. But when we add a new quest to the test cases, or some quests are modified, we need a training environment. For these quests, there is no ready-made information, and the algorithm server is based on training and searching to calculate the best path for these quests. In a word, training environment is to generate the best path, which is used in the testing environment for regression testing. When we want to add a new quest in our regression testing, we just need to put it in the training environment, and after training, add it to the testing environment. When the quests are modified, the testing environment also has a certain searching function. When the change is simple, there is a great possibility to pass the test through its own adaption. If the change is complex and uh, task step is blocked, it will be put in the training environment to update its best path. This is an example of our test report. Report contains test time, version, pass rate, and other related information. The red circle shows the main test suit of our task regression testing. In this report, all cases are passed. This report contains build cases. The table shows which task and which task step is blocked. For example, here, there are two steps blocked, number 7 and number 701. We can also click the link to get the log and the screenshots of them to check the problem. In this page, I will give the result of our work and show some important data. Our daily regression testing now covers all the main stories, totally 290 uh, quests and 4,030 steps. In most of the time, all the cases are passed normally, and accidentally, there may be one or two steps blocked. So, the step passing rate is over 99.94%. For each time of regression testing, this method will save about 10 hours compared with manual testing. And 
we found five real bugs using this method. Besides, we also use training environment to test a new quest. We launched a new series of main story in January called Qing Tian Zhai. It contains 15 quests and 348 steps. For the first time of training, five steps were blocked, and four of them were caused by bugs. And during the entire testing process, we totally found uh, six real bugs. Compared with the old method of automated regression testing, the new method has a lot of advantages, such as saving more time and labor. As shown in the table, in the past, we need one to two weeks to write a new test script for a new series of quests and uh, spend half to two days to maintain them. But now, we don't need to write a new test script or maintain them. The only thing we should do is to put them in the training environment. Our daily regression testing now covers all my stories. Besides, side stories are turning now, and uh, they will be added into daily testing as soon as possible. The step passing rate of the side story now are 96.4%. Uh, are so in the future, we expected all the quests to be covered. Moreover, the framework is easy to integrate. MMORPG games always have some common features. So this method can also be applied in other games. In the future, we plan to use the method in other MMORPG games to improve testing efficiency. The above is the work for regression testing of quests. Thanks. Okay, let's begin the second part, class balancing testing. There are six classes in Justice Online at its first launch, and one class named Nongi was released four months later. Given class in game are designed with its own trait and skill system, class balance is critical for MMORPG games. Once the balance is broken, many players will choose the predominant classes, and the game will be lack of diversity and interest. However, to make the class balance is difficult. Game designs mainly rely on human playtesting before lunch or adjusting according to player feedback after lunch. It's empirical and heteristic. And we proposed a class balance testing framework based on self play technicals in reinforcement learning domains. As shown in the slide, we create a one versus one arena and set up new memory values for two classes. And then the two classes are trained with the aim to win the opposite side. The train result will give some uh, information to the game designers of whether the two classes are, ban are balanced. The proceeding of self play is to free them one class and train the other class until the training classes reach a stable win rate of 75%, and then exchange the two classes and repeat the training. The training curve is very interesting. The win rate of class A first increase since it known at its turns, and then it decreases since it is well frozen. The T1 is time cost the class A reaches the win rate of 75% in its turns, and the T2 is the time cost the class B reaches the win rate of 75% at its turn. 
The T1 is shorter than T2 in this plot, shows so that the class A is easy to start for player. On the other hand, we also get reactions from the final ring rate. The final ring rate of class A is higher than B. It means the numerical values of the scale system is higher. At last, we will make a report based on this result for game designers, and they decide whether to modify the numerical value. As we mentioned before, Noin is a new released classes, and so how to assure the balance of Noin with the accepted classes? We choose three classes to test whether the new class is balanced. So we let Sui Meng, Shen Xiang, and Xue He to compete with Noin. And the result shows that the Noin can beat all the three classes with the win rate higher than 90%. And in most cases, Noin finishes the battle in 20 seconds and remain, and remain nearly half of blood. Although the Noin is a DPS class, it is much stronger than expected. So the desires weaken these classes before release. Okay, since last time we just gave some advice of the new class, after that we decided to make a comprehensive evaluation of the balance of all classes. So we tested all the 49 pair set of the all classes in justice. We list all the results in these tables. The intersections of row and column is the win rate and train time ratio. Win rate difference indicates the combat power of two class in games, and the train time ratio indicates the degree of easy control for a certain class. From the table, we found that the last column class, Su Wen, is very weak in one vs. one combat, and it is in accordance with the fact of the game because the class is a healer. It can heal its teammate in team fighting, but it is fragile in one with one battle. Okay, to make a summary, we introduced two lower measures to perform regulation test and class balancing test. We tested them in the justice game and get some inspiring result. And in future, we will try to improve all these two measures. For regulation testing, our next plan is to extend these measures to more MMORPG game. And now we get the shortest action sequence of the regression testing, but it made a lot of the best because the shortest pass is not always the player's choice. Some players may complete a quest with their own styles. The shortest pass may unable to cover these cases. Another example, if the game tester wants to make a full coverage of the testing, the shortest is obviously not the best. Besides, we still want to improve the robustness of these measures. For, for class balancing testing, currently the cost of training is a lot cheap. It needs a lot of time to train the models. And also, it is just suitable for one versus one, versus one combat, and a lot for PvP team balancing. Lastly, thanks Lastly, thanks for all the colleagues. We are from two different departments. We have different knowledge background, but we make a happy and a fruitful cooperation. Okay, also thanks for your time. If you have any questions, please email to me.